Well, it's good to be back for the last panel discussion of the afternoon. Um, I'm just going to go to my team to see if we have the Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food for Canada, Stephanie Beck, on the line. We had hoped to connect with her and there may have been some trouble. So just bear with me just for one moment and we will see if we can connect with Deputy Minister for Agriculture in Canada. Allow me to introduce you to our audience and then you can take the floor, Ms. Beck, okay? So on That's the line, great. joining us from Ottawa, we have the Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Ms. Speck held, uh, before taking up the, this role one month ago, Ms. Speck held the position of Associate Deputy Minister for the Department of National Defence for 13 months. Born in British Guiana of New Zealand parents, with Irish and Scottish ancestry, I understand, she joined the Government of Canada in 1990 with the Department of External Affairs and became an ambassador in Cambodia at the tender age of 34. Deputy Minister Stephanie Beck, that is quite an illustrious career that you had there. Welcome to the Forum for the Future of Agriculture. Apologies for the time delay slightly. We're delighted that you can join us this afternoon this morning, in your case, Madame Souministre, je vous donne la parole. Mm, C'est gentil, merci. Et, uh, I had the pleasure of listening to at least part of the previous panel, so a fascinating discussion, and I expect that's reflective of what you've been talking about all day. So really my pleasure on behalf of the Honorable Marie-Claude Bibot, our Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food, thank you very much for inviting Canada to be part of this conference. Um, and so I don't have much time this afternoon. You guys have a really packed agenda, but in my brief remarks, I'd like to share Canada's perspectives on the progress we've made and the steps we're taking together to improve sustainable agriculture and food systems across the planet. So Canada and the European Union share a common commitment to build a more sustainable agriculture sector. And like you, we share a strong sense of the urgency. Indeed, Montreal hosted the Biodiversity COP last December. And globally, we are seeing the increase of frequency and intensity of extreme weather events here in Canada too. Last September, Hurricane Fiona caused severe damage to farms in Atlantic Canada. And over a year ago, farmers in British Columbia on our Pacific coast lost millions of livestock and crops due to heavy flooding. And in the summer of 2021 on the Canadian prairies, the worst drought in 60 years cut grain production by 30%. And as you all know better than I, climate-related shocks to our agriculture sector are happening at a time when global food security is at a greater risk than ever due to Russia's unjust and illegal war against Ukraine and other pressures such as migration often triggered by climate change. So we must take action. There really is zero choice in the matter while retaining our ability to be a productive and reliable food supplier to the world. So in Canada, like in the European Union, we recognize that farmers and the agriculture sector are invaluable partners in meeting our shared climate goals. Our farmers and around the world, not just Canadians, are deeply committed to protecting the water, air, soil and biodiversity that we all share. What's really interesting is over the past 25 years, the value of Canadian agricultural production has nearly doubled but with almost no increase in greenhouse gas emissions. This is an amazing achievement and we need to build on it. The Canadian government is making significant investments that are helping thousands of farmers adopt clean technologies such as biodigesters and precision agriculture systems. Sustainability is of course at the heart of our new federal, provincial, territorial partnership, which will be driving investments of three and a half billion dollars over the next five years. Nous avons une approche collaborative qui commence avec les agriculteurs. Parce que la clé dans la lutte contre les changements d'ici 2030 en agriculture, c'est d'accélérer l'adoption de pratiques pour séquestrer le carbone ou réduire les émissions de gaz à effet de serre à la ferme, tout en investissant dans la science et l'innovation pour trouver de nouvelles solutions pour 2050. 
So we have a network of living labs all across the country, which is shaped to bring farmers and researchers together in the field to co-develop and test management practices that work in real farm conditions from all across Canada in the different environments that exist here. We need to address the persistent agri-environmental and climate change issues. I think you know that in Canada, the North is warming faster than the rest of the planet, and this has significant implications for agriculture. In Saskatchewan, in Western Canada, we have the first living lab to be led by an Indigenous community. This is a really important process as we look to sustainable agriculture in Canada. The other major challenge facing global food systems is food waste. And in Canada, it is estimated that more than half of our food supply is lost or wasted annually. This is appalling. We are working with partners along the value chain to try and reduce this food waste. We have a reduction challenge in place with over 500 inspiring ideas to prevent, divert and transform food waste. Another sector in which we'd like to work very closely with partners to try and make some significant advances. If we could even reduce that by half, we would be making a significant contribution to feeding the planet. And on that, to feed the world sustainably, farmers also need continued access to the latest tools and technologies, including biotech, precision agriculture, and even just basic reliable broadband internet. We need a global trading regime that is open, transparent, predictable, and based on rules. When climate shocks happen, we need strong trade networks and supply chains to support global food security. We also need regulatory systems based on science and risk and on international standards. And finally, continued consultation and collaboration are essential. So the kinds of conference that you're hosting and participating in today, really important to make that happen. We are engaging with farmers and the sector every step of the way. We're in the midst of extensive consultations on our sustainable agriculture strategy, which is a roadmap to help Canada be a leader in sustainable agriculture. We have an advisory committee with representation from all the major agricultural sectors. Et tout le monde doit être à la table. On doit entendre de nouvelles voix et de nouvelles idées. On fait tout en notre pouvoir pour inclure plus de femmes, de jeunes, d'autochtones et d'autres groupes sous-représentés à la discussion. We need everybody there to make a difference, especially as we look to the future. This is the only way we will achieve real and lasting change. And a really good example of that is our ongoing dialogue with you, with our EU colleagues in government, industry, academia. In fact, half of this department that I now lead are scientists. 2,000 of the four and a half thousand people who work here do nothing but consider the research and development that we're going to need for the future. So we've shared best, best practices on everything from soil health that you were discussing and organic farming to sustainable livestock production and fertilizer use. And we have another workshop next month on sustainable crop protect, protection with a wrap up event in the fall. So we all know feeding our growing population sustainably is the greatest challenge of our time for our governments and for our world. So we look forward to continuing the conversation, developing transformative solutions for productive, sustainable and resilient agriculture and food systems around the world. So again, thank you very much for the opportunity and I look forward to the rest of the conference. Thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> Thank you very much indeed for that, Deputy Minister Stephanie Beck, for joining us at the forum today, for delivering the perspective from Canada, outlining some of the strategies and some of the initiatives in place. We're going to have to leave it there due to time. Mais bonne continuation dans votre nouveau poste au sein de la ministère. And from Brussels, we send our best wishes. Thank you very much, Ms. Beck.